Today, we're going to be looking at how to install Docker with Portainer running on Alma Linux. We'll be using VirtualBox for this. Uh, VirtualBox is supported by most major operating systems, including Windows, Mac, and more importantly, Linux. Alma Linux is a successor to CentOS. Uh, the devs claim it will be supported until 2029. Similarly to CentOS, it's a, a free fork of Red Hat Enterprise. So the first thing we're going to do is download the Alma Linux ISO. If you go to the website almalinux.org and hit the download button, we're going to select the x86-64. We'll go for the uh, latest release, not the beta. Uh, we're going to find a mirror that's closest to us. I'm in the UK, so I'll go for GB and hit the Rackspace mirror. We'll select Alma Linux 8.5 x86-64 minimal.iso. Uh, once that's downloaded, we're going to fire up VirtualBox and create a new machine. So if we click new, and give this a name, Docker Portainer, we'll set the version to other Linux 64-bit, click next. This is how much RAM we're going to give it. So we'll go for two gig. As you can see, I've got 16 gigs installed on this machine. So two gig should be plenty. And we're going to create a virtual hard disk. Let's leave it as default, so VDI, and allow it to be dynamically allocated if necessary. So we'll click next. And this is how much storage you want to give your machine. So we'll say 32 gigabytes and create that. Before you start the machine, we, there's a couple more settings we need to change. So if you right click here and click settings, We're going to attach the ISO that we've just downloaded, so the Alma Linux image. If you click this icon here and click the Add button, select your recently downloaded image and click Choose. Okay, one more thing actually before we proceed. Um, we're just going to change the network mode to bridged. This will allow us to have an IP on our local network that uh, is allocated by your router. So if we set bridged adapter and click OK. So that's everything you need to do just to set up the virtual machine. We're going to hit start now. As you can see, the Alma Linux image appears and we hit start. OK. You should be presented with this screen. So you want to select Install Alma Linux 8.5 and just let that run. I'll skip through to the next part, um, but yeah, this will just go through the motions. Okay, so now we'll be presented with the installation process. Uh, we're going to select our language, so United Kingdom. And hit continue. Let's select our hard drive. So we just have to click done. And you'll see that's now showing no error. The next part we want to do is just enable the root password. So put in a password of your choice. And hit done. That's it. Oh, sorry, one more thing just want to enable the Ethernet adapter. So if we click on and hit done, you can see there it's got an IP address of 192.168.0.80. So if we hit done and begin installation, this will take about four or five minutes depending on the speed of your computer. So I'm just gonna skip through to the next part. Okay, so you'll notice when you restart the image, it will try to install Alma again. So what we need to do is remove ISO that we've attached. So if we close this, power off, go into the settings, 
And under storage, we're just going to remove these attached devices. So if we click across there, across there, click remove and hit OK. So we're going to start it up again. But you'll now see that we're presented with the boot menu for Alma Linux. So if we hit enter, and let it do the startup process. This may take a couple of minutes. Ah, there we go, it's already done. So using our root login, type the username root and the password that you set. Okay, so now we're booted into Alma. I'm just gonna get the IP, so IP A. And the IP here is showing us 192.168. 0.81. So the next step, if we open up, oh, if you press con right control on the keyboard, it will release your mouse from the virtual machine. So opening up a terminal, we're gonna to connect to the machine through SSH. Uh, this will allow us to paste commands, um, which is uh, gonna help us out a lot. So if we type ssh root at 192.168.0.81, again, the IP of our virtual machine, and hit enter. It will then ask you for the root password. Oh, there we go, you'll get it denied if you type it wrong. Okay, so now we've connected to our machine via SSH we're gonna update the system. So type DNF update dash Y. I'd actually already updated the system, but the first time you do this, it will take about four or five minutes to complete. The second command we'd like, need to run is DNF install dash Y yum utils and the device mapper persistent data. Oh, typo there. Okay, so they're actually already installed on this. Um, if they're not, you'll they'll go through the installation process. Again, it shouldn't take too long, maybe a minute or so. The next step is to add the Docker repository. Um, the package, the Docker package isn't on Alma by default, so you need to add a repository to allow you to download it from there. So if we type yum config manager two dashes add repo and then the URL of the repository, which in this case is docker at uh, download.docker.com forward slash Linux forward slash CentOS forward slash docker dash CE dot repo. Okay. So we've added the Docker repository. Let me just clear this. And the next step is to install Docker. So if we DNF install Docker C, and we're just gonna say Y. There we go, we've typed something wrong there. Ah, Put an unnecessary dash, okay. So I'd already had that installed, um, but you can see there, there was nothing to do. Okay, so we're now gonna install Docker using DNF. So DNF install docker ce y Hit enter. It's already installed. Um, I'd already actually done this, but if it isn't, it'll go through the motions and it will take about a minute to, to complete. The next step you wanna do is Using systemctl, you want to start Docker and add it and enable it so it boots on system startup. So systemctl again, enable Docker. Okay, that's done. So if we clear this, uh, a, a good command you can run um, is docker ps. This will show you a list of all of the containers you've got currently installed. At the moment, we haven't installed any, any containers, so it's showing blank. 
Okay, so now we've got Docker installed, the next step is to install Porttainer and access the web interface. I'm going to use the official Porttainer documentation for this, so let's just move this over here and clear. Okay, so I'll link this in the description, but there's two steps to it. We create our volume using the Docker command Docker volume create. This will name the, the volume portainer data. So we, we hit enter. And if successful, it will just output the name of the created volume. The next step is to install the portainer container. It's quite a tongue twister. Um, so if we copy this and paste. Oh, let's try that again. Just click the copy icon there. Uh, I will change this here to latest. That will just ensure that we're getting the latest Portainer version because the documentation may be out of date and it's downloaded version 2.93 there. Okay, and hit enter. Okay, you can see here it's saying that it was unable to find the image locally. So it's actually gone out to look for the Port Tennessee image and download it. Again, it's downloaded the latest version and that should now be complete. Okay, so now that's installed, we're going to access the web interface. So if we type IPA to bring up our IP, is 192.168.0.81. Just move this over. If I open up Firefox, you can see I've already tried to access it. So if we type HTTPS, oh, HTTPS 192.168.0.81, so the IP of the device and the port 9443. It will show a uh, potential security risk. You can ignore this. This is just because we don't have a valid certificate. So if you hit advanced and accept the risk and continue. Okay, and now we're presented with a Portainer installation screen. Um, we're just gonna put set a password here. So create the user admin. You can untick this if you worried about what data they're collecting and click create user. And just as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to install an app from the app templates. So if we click the Portainer logo or click home and expand the app templates, you can see here Portainer have included a bunch of app templates which uh, are some of the more popular ones. So if we want to create a Apache server, we can click that, give it a name, and deploy. And that's it. You can now see our Apache test server is up and running. So if we go to take our IP and the port, which is 49153 and hit enter. It works. There we go. So we've just installed an Apache server. Also going back to the terminal, if you now type docker ps, you can see that's full screen this for more clarity. Um, you can see now we've got two containers one being Portainer and the second being our Apache server. Okay, thanks very much.